Hey, I want to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Dane Maxwell on the line. He's founder over at startfromzero.com, which offers training programs um, for thriving as an entrepreneur. Dane, welcome to the show. Hey, man, let's do something. All right, so I and speaking of doing something, I'm excited to get into today's topic. So, how to start a lucrative business with no idea, no money, and no experience. And we're also going to talk a little bit more about your book, um, Start From Zero. So, uh, first, just to kick us off, tell us a little bit more about what you're doing over at StartFromZero.com, please. Well, let's just lead with an example. So, I want to start by saying that you are worthy of having your own business and not only worthy but they're much simpler than you might ever imagine to do so there's a context that you can learn and that allows you to create these lucrative businesses with no ideas no money no experience with the relative safety in fact i'd say in today's environment even more safety once you're trained, but more safety than an employee. And if you think about being an employee, you want to make sure you have a, a job that can really provide it's, – it's, employee, being an employee is more and more vulnerable today than it was in the past. And um, anyway, I'll, let me just – I'll just show you the example here. So this context is called the starter context. And this starter context is people first, problem second, sales third, outsource product creation fourth, get a result with your first customer fifth, scale sixth. Now let's use an example. So, and before before the actual, actual example, let's look at the traditional business context which is website or business first, expertise second, create product from expertise third, which you had to spend years acquiring expertise in the first place, random acts of marketing fourth, give up and call business risky fifth, and tell anybody else who wants to start a business that it's risky. The traditional context is what creates the risk. So let's look at this people first, problem second, sales third, outsource creation fourth, get a result fifth, scale to other customers sixth. And I want to use one of my favorite examples. Let's talk to a parrot owner, a gray African parrot owner, because those are big, those are expensive parrots. Let's say you talk to that person. You ask them, you know, what problems they have. People first, now problem second. They say, you know, their parrot's pretty good for the most part, except every once in a while it likes to bite. And that really hurts. And that's a serious problem. It's pain. The parrot bites, that hurts. So now you go to sales third and you say, with this problem, is this problem serious enough that you pay to solve it? That's pretty much all you got to do to ever sell anything, by the way. Is this serious enough that you want to pay for it? That's pretty much it. And, oh, there's a little more to it, but if you need to summarize it to one question, that does work well. And they say, yes, definitely, definitely would pay to solve this. So now you're going to outsource the product creation. Fourth, so now you're not a parrot, gray African parrot expert. You are an entrepreneur, and people confuse entrepreneur with expert all day long. Entrepreneurs hire experts. Experts think they're entrepreneurs. Okay, so, and some experts are if their business runs without them but most people don't know how to build a business that runs without them because most of them aren't using a starter context so or a context similar to starter context. So now you go and you call a parrot store. And you find, hey, do you have a parrot trainer on staff? They say no. So you call another one. They say no. The third parrot store you call, they, oh, there's a parrot trainer on staff. And so you ask if you can speak with them. They get on the phone and you ask them, hey, do you know how to solve behavioral issues for parrots like biting? Like, oh, yeah, that's pretty simple. 
and you say, well, I'm looking to put together a course to teach actually gray African parrot owners how to get their parrots to stop biting. And I was wondering if you would like to be the expert and teach that. And I will give you 20% of the profit of that business as a passive income stream, and you just got to spend about a day with your iPhone and teach it. And most people say yes to something like that. So he says yes. So then you record the training videos. You get them, he sends them to you on Dropbox. And excuse my dog upstairs there. And he sends it to you on Dropbox. You send the Dropbox files to this this gal who has her parrot. And she uses the videos and finds out that, wow, they're really great. But there's one thing she's confused about. So she asks the question back, right? She couldn't get a result right away. Because outsource product creation fourth, get a result fifth. So you send the videos. It's like a Dropbox and or Google Drive. And then she asks the question. So you send the question back to the parrot trainer. The parrot trainer records a video answer, sends that question and answer back as a video. She gets the answer, and lo and behold, her parrot stops biting her. Now, you've had your sale. She paid to solve it. You know, since it's your first customer, can't really screw up your first customer. I mean, you, you actually, that's actually exactly what you're supposed to do, is to screw up your first customer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not, not figuring you can't, it out. But like, yeah, you're figuring it out. So you say, what would you pay to solve this problem? Well, man, if my parrot stopped biting me, I'd pay 300 bucks for that. Because a gray African parrot is like $1,800 parrot. So they say 300 bucks. Okay. So every sale, if there's no expense, 20% of the profit, you give 60 bucks to that parrot trainer. That could change that person's life. Not only are you starting a business, but you're actually improving the parrot owner's life, providing an income stream for this expert. Entrepreneurs are very, very, they're pretty cool when they're, when they're done, when it's done correctly. So now she gets a result with this thing. So now you have a testimonial from this woman. You say, yeah, my parrot bit me, and now it doesn't. Now you're ready to scale to other parrot owners. So now you go into Facebook groups, and or you find gray African parrot meetup groups or parrot meetup groups. So you just start going deeper in and start talking to people and introducing your course to them and scale to others six. And that is how you started a business. Now, you, you start a business. Now, think about this. You didn't buy a domain. You didn't build a website. You didn't rely on your expertise. And you're not going to do random acts of marketing. You're going to follow a proven marketing plan. And now you've just started a business. And i got to tell you, Adam, this is one of the most exhilarating ways I've ever started a business. In fact, the rush I get from finding a problem, outsourcing it to an expert, and then seeing a student get a result, is one of the most exhilarating things in my life, and I always wonder, like, why aren't more people doing this? Why don't they know about it? So if we look at another example, I'll use one of my own personal examples. So I'm talking to people, and they say they have issues with their mindset. So people first. And so I just sent some people in my Facebook feed. And and so I say, hey, is anybody having struggle? So I, I ask the question, is anybody having any struggle with mindset issues in my Facebook feed? And I, I say, send me a private message. And so I get about five people that send me a private message. And I ask them, great, what's your biggest problem with mindset? And they say, man, I really struggle focusing. And you wouldn't believe it, Adam, but this is one of those amazing situations where all five people said the same thing. The same mm-hmm. problem was focus. They all struggle with focus. So now I ask if they pay to solve it, and they say yes. And then I, I'm not an expert at focus. So I found an expert that knows how to do focus. And they asked him if he would teach it for 20% of the profit. And then we actually sold this course. Four out of five of those people bought actually for around 300 bucks, a six-week course on focusing. And because think about how much results or how many results and how much money and how much progress mm-hmm. and success focus is. I mean, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates credit focus as the primary quality of their success. So does John D. Rockefeller. But anyway, I mean, I could use that to sell the course. So, oh, my God, those people say i got to get more focus. But anyway, that's, that's how you write sales letters and stuff to sell. That's a different topic. You learn that after you've got a person with a problem that you've sold, that you've outsourced to an expert. So now we've got about 34 people that have bought that uh, mindset course. And I just got a Facebook message the other day. Um, for, they posted a Facebook the other day, and he said, I can't thank you enough for this course. 
it has changed my life, the vulnerability of people in it, and the ability to see my mental issues. Mindset is the ultimate focus hack. I'm so, so grateful. Wow. And that's a, you know, that's a little business that we started, and I was the entrepreneur, not the expert. So now this context kicks butt, and this context requires you to be very good at two skills. And I think there's only two skills that you need to succeed as an entrepreneur. And one, and they're not expertise. Like, a, a, not expertise in, a, in like a domain area. Like, you don't need to know as much of it as a surgeon. Mm-hmm. Okay, but the two, the two skills are selling and outsourcing. Now, if you can do those two things, you can build a business you don't have to work in. You can have a really great life. And I just want to encourage you that selling is historically very manipulative. I did some research and found that 80% of most of sales material is manipulative in nature. It's all about what to do to get a sale as opposed to how to listen to a human heart and find their problem. And selling is about problem solving and really serving. And, And that's a, I mean, you know, you talk about like, let's say like someone got eaten by a tiger and then he gives birth to a kid and that kid will probably have passed down in his bloodstream or some part of his body a biological belief, don't go near tigers, like biolog- biology of belief getting passed down from generation to generation. I think that's happened with selling. I really do. It's a little, little woo-woo, but it seems, it seems to make a, makes a little bit of sense in my mind. I'm not confident on it or anything. But anyway, if you think selling is manipulative, historically over the last 100 years, 80% of it has been. So you can uh, rest assured knowing that if you sold to solve a problem, and that's what you're doing. You're doing people first, problem second, sales third. Hey, would you would you pay to solve this problem? Is this problem severe enough that you pay to solve it? If they say no, that's fine. You say, oh, cool. You just saved yourself starting a business that would fail. And this is all outlined in the book I released, which is seven different learning adventures and 302 pages. It's seven learning adventures. It's one of the most incredible business books I've ever had the privilege of, of seeing. And I so happen to be the guy that get, got to wrote it, write it, wrote it. Good Lord. Don't listen to my, listen, I'm not at grammar. I just do entrepreneurship. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, it's great. And you're, and the thing is, is your, your breakdown for everybody listening. So they may be thinking they're like, and maybe if you're not familiar with Dane's work, you're, you might, you may be thinking it can't be that easy. But the funny thing is, is that I've seen people do exactly what Dane is saying many, many times over and make lots of money doing it. The, the exact formula that you just said. And the, the problem with it is that it does seem so easy that, you know, our mind have to have to kind of complicate everything and it's like and you held true to your show topic you did show people a way to do it and I've seen people replicate this over and over and over again when I used to do I used to quite some time ago before I got into podcasting I used to do um, coaching and other things like that and when I did I remember and I did what you just said is exactly what I did I put up a, a post I got a couple clients I started doing it I developed it like all the other things um, and and it's very interesting to me um, that this can be done over and over again. And there's there's all you're really talking about is how do you how, is solving the problem. And the funny thing is, is that the um, that those the um, the expert in the field or the person that you're help getting to to um, to teach the, the the topic, it's such a win win situation because many times those people are not entrepreneurs. They don't want to do anything with marketing. They don't want to do anything outside of their field, and that's why they're technicians. That's why they're experts in their field because that's what they do so you they get to stay in their comfort zone they get to make money you get to stay in your comfort zone you get to make money and then ultimately that testimonial that you shared with us i mean that's that's what the end result like somebody has really helped because you went out there as an entrepreneur and and decided to solve a problem and you use your your talent and your and your thought process to get the right person to, to, for the course and all the other things that it took because it wasn't, let's just put it this way, it's not the hardest thing to do, but it does take effort. So you put all the effort behind it, and uh, and because of that, you're helping people. Oh, man, that's an awesome story. Can I say one quick thing on that? Yeah, go for it. So try the process 10 times before you give up on it, and let yourself just feel lost and confused and overwhelmed and stressed out. And 
this will trigger a lot of this will probably trigger a lot of fear in you because <clears throat> it's a new concept like your first day going to school like going to school you're going to go to school for eight hours very simple may not actually be that easy in practice because of the emotions that will come up. Mm-hmm. If you give yourself 10 times to try this, find 10 people, find their problem, try and sell, try and find an expert, you do it 10 times, by the 8th, ninth, or 10th time you'll have to practice. If you do it once and it's not as easy as I made it sound, nothing's wrong with you. It's a matter of practice. It's all it is. If I told you that the, the, the process I laid out would be like the equivalent this is, this is why it takes training. This is why I recommend picking up my book because you need to build the mental structures to make it this fluid. Like if I told you that if you were going to go out and squat 500 pounds and you lifted that off the rack, it squash you to the ground. You need years to build up to squatting 500 pounds. Well, you don't need years to build up to this, but you do need a little practice. So please, please see it as a practice. Do it 10 times. Find 10 people. I had a guy... He said, why can't I be successful? All these other people are more successful. I know I'm smarter than them. I know I'm this. I, why can these people be more successful than me? What's going on? What's wrong with me? He said, well, how many times do you fail? He's like, I've failed plenty of times. He's like, have you failed more than 10 times? No, I've failed about three. Okay, you haven't failed enough yet. That's the only issue. Michael Jordan, has a, Michael Jordan has missed a lot of game-winning shots. You go out and work out to push your muscles to failure. You go out and risk your heart in entrepreneurship, and you might subconsciously believe that you only have one chance to make this work. Crap. That's just a bunch of crap. You have as many times as you want to make this work. Never believe that you only have – you have more than one shot at love. You have more than one shot at business. You have more than one shot at wealth. You have as many shots as you're willing to stand up and take. So please. Please give yourself enough shots until you see this work because when you get the experience of seeing that you are not only worthy but beyond worthy to help solve someone else's problem, you could solve someone else's problem. You could receive financial compensation for that. You could actually improve someone someone else's life on your own through simply following the context like this. Please give your mind the space to practice until it's perfected. Man, that's awesome. So, Dane, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about um, working with you and your team over at startfromzero.com or if they want to pick up your books, I mean, what's the best way for them to connect? Um, So don't get my book. Instead, what I'd recommend is check out the excerpt. And then if you like the excerpt, you can either hop into one of our courses or you can pick up the book. But the excerpt's free. It's five pages, and it walks you through five questions a five-question process that you can use to ask people to find what their problem is and also for them to give you the solution to the problem. You don't even need to come up with the uh, idea or solution. You ask the customer for the problem, then you ask the customer for their idea of the solution. Then you find an expert to build that. You're really just listening, deeply listening, and that's a really great way to build a company. Instead of coming in with your own idea or trying to think of something on your own, you just deeply listen and let that guide the way. So if you want that five-question process, you can get that free at startfromzero.com forward slash five, F-I-V-E, startfromzero.com forward slash five. Pick up that excerpt. You'll hear about how I use the five-question process on my girlfriend, and like I just used my, and I found a great idea, and it was an amazing process. It's exhilarating, and and you can get that, and if you like the excerpt, then do pick up the book. The book was written over two years with five editors. It's 302 pages. There's research in there. There's data in there. It's not a book of my opinions. It's a book of collected documentation that's been proven to get results for the most part. You know, some of it's my opinion. But startfromzero.com forward slash five. Check out the excerpt. Fall in love with business. And I want to end by saying that there does not need to be an ongoing struggle with business. Sure, we have little things but there need be no ongoing struggle in business. There need be no ongoing fear and survival chemicals rushing through your brain because you're worrying about what's going to happen. Your struggle in business can all end in a moment. And it ends the moment that you start listening. Fantastic. That's That's, That's what business owners struggle is they're not listening. They're trying to sell something that people don't want and they ain't listening. Love it. You can stop when you listen. That's it. 
Fantastic, Dane. Well, hey, um, been a pleasure having you on the show today. Um, love the work you're doing. Love the, also the how, how nice and concisely you summed up a business model that I've seen a lot of people make some money over throughout the years. For those listening, you might want to listen to this one a second time, but definitely go check out um, uh, Jane, uh, Dane's site, startfromzero.com. Pick up the books, do all that other good stuff. Um, I think you're going to benefit from it. And uh, Dane, thanks again for coming on the show. I really appreciate it.